to get it done. Amen. Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the law, and his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall, shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, mm. nor sinners in the congregation of righteous. The Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Hallelujah! Say God! I'll praise God of Abraham, God of Jacob, for the Sabbath day. Peace and bless the Sabbath to the family. We got an article up here. Current news, we is still out. We got to find it, though. Know, you know, we've been running around all day trying to find it. Nobody got it for some reason. We went to the library, printed this out. Front of news, we, May 21st, 2012, the first gay president. Barack Obama. Black man. Uh, and we all, like I say, we all, <laughs> all vote for, who a lot of people voted for, based off him just being black right. and him speaking so well. Uh, yeah. Ain't nobody tripping off what his morals is, what God he served, what he stands for. Just he's black. He speaks so well. Right? First, we're going to grab the definition of the Bible dictionary, right hand for it. Because the, the deception is he's one of us. That's the deception. He's one of us. So they already knew. Roll out somebody that looked like them, they'll swallow with a hook, line, and sink. Right? But he's not one of us. He's a, a native African. His father is a Kenyan. Native African. You know the definition of ham of the Bible dictionary. So you was even duped in believing he was you. No, nah, he was. He was uh, prepped and raised up in their schools, educated in their schools, and rolled out to me. And even sit a full term in the Senate before he was president. And we sat two years in the Senate, traveled the world, met all the world leaders. This before he was president. They was crying over him in Greece, snotting over him. All that. Change! Huh? What kind of change you talking about? What kind of change we talking about here? Hey, sir. Huh? Amongst many other things, more people have died on this watch than George Whiskey Push. Uh, he done made, you look at his policies and what he's been passing, he made George Whiskey Bush look like a fairy tale. Wow. Huh? Mickey Mouse. Straight up. <laughs> but he speaks so well, though. That's when he grabbed it. Ham. 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 I'm the Bible dictionary. Sound of heart. Sound of heart. Ham. The youngest son of Noah, mm. born probably at about 96, 96 years before the flood, mm. and one of the eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark race. Father of the dark races, come on. Not the Negroes. But not the Negroes. <laughs> See, we all, we've been seduced into believing that we all one people. Yes, we was on the continent of Africa. Israel is right here. It's a one-sided land, man. It ain't nothing to run from people that's chasing us and hiring amongst other dark-skinned folk. Right? So we've been on the continent of Africa, but we don't come out the loins of ham. Come out the loins of shame. Come on, people. But the Egyptians, Egyptians, come on. Ethiopians, uh -huh. Libyans, uh -huh. and Canaanites. So you got uh, Obama. So let me ask you a question. I'm sorry to put in. So okay, so I'm looking at this map here, and Canaan is part of the Greece. So yeah. why is it? Oh, yeah. Well, Cain, because Cain, that's the land we explored. They was the original inhabitants of that land. We came out of Egypt, wandered in the wilderness, and the Lord said, we'll take that land right there. But Joshua. But we originally was Shem. Yeah, we come out of Shem. You know, Shem got a whole bunch of different sons. Abraham, we come out of Shem through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. But they were Shemites. They was dark skin, but they were not Hamites. Okay. They was not African. Right, so that, this was part of their land until what they called the land of Canaan. Until we got to hear from the Lord to go take it. 
Um, they were child sacrificing, uh, oh, drinking oh, blood, okay. doing all type of rituals. Okay. And he had promised Abraham that land right there. Okay. All right, Abraham was from up, up in here somewhere. Mm -hmm. And he called him about his land and said, go to this land, I'm going to show you land. So, but originally, they, it was a part of Ham. Yeah, yeah, took yeah. Okay. But you see, today, Israel, it's, it's, it's right, it's one solid land mass. You can walk. Mm -hmm. from, from what they would call Israel today, right in Egypt, Ethiopia is down here, Libya. Okay. Right, all oh, that. One solid landmass. And as many times the Israelites was on the continent of Africa, hiding amongst Hamites. Mm -hmm. Amongst Hamites from Romans and all that. Do that only be because the same color? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because you, we can't go hide in the door. Right. Right. Three cold, right? You gotta hide amongst people that look like you. Somebody's running, or, or like when you drive down 70 and you see the little billboard, so and so wanted for murder. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can almost bet he ain't out in the creek cold to work out. He in the hood hat. You see what I'm saying? Same type of thing. You, you run and hide amongst people that look like you, or they can't find you. Either. All right, you finish it off, bro. Yeah, you finish it off. So, yeah, so Obama is not one of us. That's the thing. Some of the brothers that's old enough to tell you the Chase Park Plaza down right there on uh, King's Highway in Linda. Some of the brothers, uh, I ain't old enough to know this, but uh, in the 60s, Daniel and them talk about it all the time. Uh, Africans would come right over and walk in the front door of the Chase Park Plaza. We had to go in the back door. Because they know the difference. They know we are not these people right here. We're not, we are not native Hamites. All right, so let's, let's get into it. Uh, let's read. Uh, Leviticus, rather Leviticus 20, we got to show the scripture, Old and New Testament, because this is the cover of Newsweek, the first gay president. According to him, Jesus died so homosexuals can get married. I'm a Christian, and a lot of people take that as face value and say, oh, well, it must be okay. It's not in the Bible. Or maybe it is in the Bible, but the New Testament doesn't say nothing about that. Jesus died, so it's all good. That's what's being taught. I'm just going to go through some of the scriptures and uh, show from the Old to the New Testament that the Lord never changed his mind about what they call homosexuality or what the Bible calls sodomy. Bradley Vickers 20 and 13 is real. And like my brother said, coming out with a gay Bible next, a gay version of the Bible. They're going to continue to blaspheme. Let me show this one for real fast. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's say, moreover, Adam and Eve, here comes Adam and Steve. Which you, which you, which you, uh, this is off of the game revision what? of the Bible to go on sale. This is on deadseriousnews.com. Deadserious? It's a new article. Deadseriousnews.com? Deadseriousnews.com. Game revision of the Bible to go on slow, sale. Slow down, people. So they can out here. Time on deadseriesnews.com. Go ahead, bro. Here comes Adam and Steve, as well as Samantha and Delight. A newly revised gay-friendly Bible is set to go on sale in the next few weeks. Reaction to this announcement has been met with venom in conservative Christian groups. Pink Cross Publishing, the same company that published the gay-friendly version of the Quran. Pink Cross Publishing? Yeah. The same company that published the gay friendly version of the Quran stated that there were adding the finishing touches to the newly revised Bible. Mary and Joseph will, re will be replaced by Mary and Josephine, a lesbian couple unable to have children the conventional way, hence the virgin birth of Jesus. All of Jesus' disciples will be gay except for Judas. In the new Bible, all the disciples will pray off after the Last Supper with the exception of Judas. Satan will also be straight. The new gay, the new gay friendly version of the Bible has not been gay. Well, the that goes around, they have Jesus and playing gay. It's been traveling. It's a play that they have that travels every year. They have Jesus and the disciples gay. Everyone moves with the black Jesus and he looks gay. Yeah, 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 yeah. The color of the cross. Yeah, you know what you're talking about? He was kind of dirty at the patch. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like, hold on now. What's going on here? Now check this out. Y'all can use this a video on YouTube right here called Homosexuals Brainwashing Our Children in School. And it's two points. <laughs> <laughs> See, let's see. I told you. school. Hold on, wait. So this right here. And then they on their mind, they just they, they sit them down from when they six, five years old, and then they're teaching them that lifestyle is an alternative, healthy lifestyle. Amy has two moms, Jack has two dads, you know, little stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Destroying the mindset of our young ones because they think it's okay. Mm -hmm. 
right? And everybody's whispering now because they know it's a hate crime. Like if you're on the streets reading what we finna read, you can be charged with a hate crime. Know that. Like if you read Leviticus 2013, what we finna read, and a sodomite walk by, you feel me? He can call the police on you and you be charged with a hate crime. So everybody's shushing now, like, you feel me? Go ahead, man. But they had, I mean, it's like they're forcing this view on you because I was reading on the internet today or last night of uh, this transgender okay. USA pageant of Miss America, whatever it was, in Canada, uh -huh. where they sued, I guess it was Donald Trump or somebody, because of the rules stating that you have to be a natural, that the rules that you have to be a natural born woman to be a part of this contest. So they sued him. Making him change the rules, saying, "Okay, well, you can be as long as you're a woman when you sign up, you can be in the contest." Yeah, everybody, everybody is compromising now. You see what I'm saying? Believing that the Bible is outdated. You know, uh, it doesn't matter anymore. God changes mind. That's what's going on. They're trying to change the definition of woman to man. I think all that, all the as in the days of Noah, though, all type of inordinate affections is going on in the earth, man. Feel me? So it, 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 that's the war that we're fighting. You know, it's not a physical war, you know what I'm saying? We in a war against sin, abomination. And a lot of our children are being raised in these institutions, right? Believing that this is okay. If everybody adopted this mindset, there would be no more reproduction going on. Everybody was on the sexual world, there would be no more children. None of that. Life would stop on the earth. That's how you know it's sadistic. It's satanic. Let's get that. We're going to score. Let's get it. Then we're going to go to the New Testament, too, for people that say it's not in the New Testament. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So then you got to make the decision. Who, who is your leader? Is it him? Says he's a Christian. I mean, a Christian slash Muslim. They got pictures of him in his Muslim go ups too. I uh, Exactly. Exactly, but see that, that that's that movement called coexist. They they bringing all the doctrines and faiths together under one banner. Worship how you want to worship. It doesn't matter, you know. But you know, you say like if you talk about it, um, it could be considered a hate crime. But what about those who are heterosexuals? Can we we can you know what I'm saying? Right, you should, right? we should be able to be offended too. You right, know? but it's like they are lifting the the, uh, the sodomites and putting them up as if they got more rights than us. And what the what little sister said, she couldn't even go to Ponderosa with them because they all was gay. They all was gay. No, because she was gay. Yeah, she, she, she ain't gay, but they all was gay right. going to a I told her at my school, yeah. like my principals, it's so many, and like the kids, can, they, it's so many girls just walk hugging, you know what I mean? Just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The principal is gay, so she promotes it. And then they, they have they, they show a lot of these preachers on TV too, black preachers. They okay. Oh, it's okay, you know, uh, it doesn't say there's no word in the New Testament that you think because he has a collar on him that he, when he said it's valid. It must not say it. Oh, Jesus died for it, it's all good. Jesus died to make us lawless. That was his whole mission. He died so we could just rebel against his father. Uh, somebody got the message wrong. All right, let's get to it, man. Let's get to the script. How do you clean, if you, you know what I'm saying, two of the same... Like the two males and two females. Like how you cleave on till mate. Exactly. That's right. In order, affection. We're in Leviticus 20 and 13. Form of fornication, unlawful lust. Leviticus chapter 20 and Leviticus chapter 18 go into the forms of fornication. That you are not supposed to be <coughs> coming near to. Come on, brother. <coughs> Leviticus 20 and 13. If a man also lie with with mankind mm. as he lieth with a woman, mm. both of them have commit, c committed an abomination. Both of them. Mm. Both of them. Come on. They shall surely be put to death. Now that's the judgment on them. You're not telling y'all to go around killing homosexuals. Right? Judgment has been given to Christ and that judgment is coming. If somebody is caught in that wickedness and has not repented, by the time the Lord cracked the sky, He's not about to pat a sodomite on the back like it's okay, you didn't get it right. <laughs> or an adultery, it's okay, you didn't. You gotta be repenting from that, putting that down and departing from it. That's what we ought to be doing. So the judgment on it is death. Don't get it twisted just because we're not administering the judgment right now. You see that? That's because we're under grace. That's what the grace is. Heads are not rolling right now. That's what that means. Right? But you don't take that and say, oh, well, okay. 
Well, since heads are not rolling and judgment is far off, I'm going to do what I want to do. No, no, no. You've got grace so you can grow in the love of the Lord and learn what he wants you to do before he enters into judgment. See that? Read it again, brother. 13 again. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, mm -hmm. both of them have committed an abomination. Mm -hmm. They shall surely be put to death. They shall surely be put to death. Uh, that's a felony. That's a felony sin. That's a felony. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's, a that's, mm. that's major. That's a, what the Lord called an abomination. Something that disgusts you. Yeah. So there's a difference between just like a sin and an abomination. Uh, the abomination is disgust. All sin is an abomination to the Lord. But he got certain things that straight like it's hard for brothers to come back off of. Like me personally, I don't know no homosexuals that have ever repented. And straight came back and was teaching the word how they pose to be. Uh, he gives them to how, after so long they reject him, he gives them over to a defiled mind, a reprobate mind, because they didn't want the Lord when he was trying to get out. You know what I'm saying? Because so, you don't have people say, like, you know. Your sin is, your sin is no better than mine. Bro. Right. No doubt. But what, are we, but what are we doing? Are we acknowledging what we're doing and right. repenting from it and not teaching it? Or are we saying, it don't matter? Mm -hmm. That's the point. Y'all ain't like, well, it don't matter. We all sin. I'm going to keep laying up with that. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yep. That's what you say, like, like it's all good. Instead of saying, no, that's wrong. I better stop doing that. That's the mindset the Lord wants us in. To be, to be humble and be like, Lord, I know I ain't even worthy to be living. I'm tripping. Right? But you got people that got all these lusts on them and running around here talking about they saved already. Got all these lusts on them. Ain't even banging. Ain't even teaching. They, they flock out of banging against this. Mm -hmm. Sister Marley, that's what they said, I saw on the news too the other day where uh, the gay pastor was on the news. What? Because I seen, hey, was it old boy? Hey, Marley. Did, did, did he have did he had a collar on? I seen boy. And he's upset because he they won't let him play baseball. Play <laughs> <laughs> like baseball. Yeah. He get a ball, huh? Uh, but I, I just, I mean, I'm I'm concerned and scared about what is he teaching his so called congregation. Oh. If Man, look, that, that look, a little bit off topic, check this out. It's a cat uh, claiming he's Jesus Christ on earth right now. He's Hispanic. He got all his followers getting 666 tattoo on him. What? Oh, that dude down in Texas. Yeah, 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 yeah I think so. Yeah, yeah. Hey, y'all look dude up, man, the Hispanic, the Hispanic Jesus. Yeah, he got all the grills. He got, yeah, yeah, he, he got a lot of people too. Hispanic Jesus, 666, he getting that, all that tattoo on him. And then June 30th, he supposed to be transcendent and, 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 and glowing around her. Y'all look that up too, man. The Hispanic Jesus, 666, dude going to pop right up. He said that he's Jesus from 2,000 years ago. All right, let's get to Leviticus 18. Leviticus 18, verse 22. What's the understanding we got just so far of one scripture? If a man lie with a man as, he, as he's supposed to lie with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They both should be put to death. Right? How do you take that lightly and say the Lord changes not? I thought the scriptures say the Lord changes not. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> Come on, people. Leviticus 18 and 22. Yeah. I'm going to jump into the New Testament as well. So we don't be under no illusion because they're rolling out all these pastors now and they all saying, oh, it's okay. No, Jesus died, so you know we ain't under that law no more. Right? So people saying, oh, it's okay to do this. It's okay to be a murderer, an adulterer, a sodomite, an idolater. That's what you're saying. What's idolater? Somebody that worships idols. The worship of a worship of false gods. That's the idol board over there. As a matter of fact, let's go with the grass. You get it right. This is the idol board. And, it, and it's not limited to this. It's plenty of idols. This is the idol board. Now, this is the cross, the ox. You got brothers walking around rocking this. This is supposed to mean eternal life. You know, Christ means eternal life. This is the cobblestone for the Muslims. This is the rock that the Muslims pray to. When they face east toward Mecca, this is what they do. They make their pilgrimage. They walk around this counterclockwise and throw rocks at it. That's what goes on. These are idols. Uh, white Jesus. Come on now. Seizure boy Jesus. Yeah. And this, this picture was painted 
1,500 years after the death and resurrection of the real Christ, during the time of the Renaissance, which means rebirth. Why is black folks running Europe during the Dark Ages? White folks came back up and started defacing all the images. White water. And that's when you got all what you see today, all these images right there. The Renaissance, rebirth. This was not going on. Right, so these are idols, and, and, and idolatry is the worship to these idols. The, the spiritual rituals, they go on. And there's plenty of them. You got that in the biggest 18, bro? Yeah. Chapter 18, verse 22. Hmm. Thou shalt not lie with mankind mm. as with womankind. Mm. It is an abomination. It is what? An abomination. Let's get the definition on abomination, man, so we don't have to know the rules. Abomination. Anything abominable, anything greatly disliked or abhorred. Oof. Intense aversion or loathing. Detestation. Mm. A vile, shameful, mm. or detestable action. Detestable action, condition, shameful, come on. Condition or habit, mm. etc. Mm. So something ba basically something very disgusting. Spitting in public is an abomination. No, no, no. no. We ain't gonna. <laughs> right, I'm not gonna say that. Abomination. Is that how you say? What does it say? Does it say? Let's pull it up. Pull it up so we can understand. As you know, all the sin is wicked to the most high, but it's something that's dis disgusting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that, that's that abomination. And something in which he's not changing his mind on. Like if something is disgusting to the Lord. Where you get off saying, oh, it don't matter. Like, how do you take that lightly? I, I still don't get that with folks. Like, oh, it doesn't matter no more. So, it, it, so it's blessed now. It's sanctified by marriage and all. Same rituals everybody uses to get married. Men are going to other men, dropping their knee, putting a ring on their finger. Standing up in front of the, the so-called pastor, and he say, by the power invested in me. I'm not pronouncing you. Y'all pronounce you husband and husband. You kiss your husband. You know, this is a man of the Lord right here. Makes no sense. It ain't enough. It's not enough. It's got abomination and desolation. I got this. It's right here in this wisdom column, though. Let's look at abomination. 84 is in the biggest 20. 84, 41. 84, 41. All right, let's get the understanding of it. Abomination. The Hebrew word. Yeah, the Hebrew word for it. That's what we're doing now, just looking up the words that abomination came from when they translate the Bible. 84 41. Oof. There you go, right here, brother. You mind reading that? What's that say? 8441. Hebrew, Hebrew word something disgust something what disgust mm. uh, idolatry mm. that's an abomination to worship of another god of Horus uh, so something disgusting shameful something that the Lord detests he hates something that he abhors abhor means to hate or whatever so he said man should not lie with man as he lied with a woman it is an abomination. Right? So did it change ever since Christ went to the cross? Did that change? No. They're teaching you it did, though. He puts that right with, like, bestiality because it's right next to it. Yeah, that's same. a form of fornication as well. A lot of that's going on these right. days. They're laying with animals. Right. It's an abomination. Right? So when you read through Leviticus 18 and Leviticus 20, these are those, this, this, is, uh, this is technically, those are the chapters on fornication. So in a sense, homosexuality is no different from laying with a beast. No, it's not. No, it's not. Exactly. Abomination. It's abomination. Like what, what what lust or what inspired you to go lay with a horse? <laughs> <laughs> what really is on you? Or you to go lay, lay with a dog or something. And, and, and not that that ain't disgusting. Right. <laughs> That's let's an abomination. Get, let's get this Romans. Let's show it in here. Matter of fact, first Matthew 5. My bad, then we go to Romans. Matthew chapter 5. Okay. Matthew chapter 5, y'all, verse 17 through 19. We're going to get Christ on record talking about the law that they claim is done away with. And then what, Genesis? 13. Uh, 13. 13. Go to Matthew 5. Then we got this Romans up here. This is all in the New Testament as well. But when we sit up there, you know, we study the script a little bit, and we see these men on TV, and he just... I so eloquently tell you, oh, it doesn't matter anymore. It's nowhere in the New Testament. Everybody's standing up applauding. And that's right. 
all black folks should be behind this movement. It's just 40 years ago, y'all was fighting for y'all civil right. rights. Huh? A play on it like that. <laughs> you go, you go from uh, begging for civil rights for God's people to blessing abomination. You can't even compare that, man. Stop. Stop. Man. And everybody's saying, okay, Jay-Z even came out and said he supports it. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah. All of them. All you out here. We know 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 we you can't even act like this, you know what I'm saying, man? How do you get naked and then let another man... They was naked, and that was gay. Yeah, it don't make no sense. You got naked another man naked five. You got to match five to seven. You got to match five, y'all, verse 17. Shalom, family. Shalom, shalom. No. We're going over America's first gay president. That's what the article said. It ain't us talking bad. The article said, Newsweek, America's first gay president. Wow. Uh, but he speaks so well. He speaks so well. <laughs> <laughs> people voted for him. Oh, he speaks well. He's black. He's black. No understanding. We've been destroyed as a people. Jews was black. Jews so not the Christ. Christ called him the devil. So how are we just looking outwardly and saying, well, you know, he looks like me. It's good. All the Israel ancient enemies, the majority of them look just like you. All the wars they was fighting against other nations and all that, most of them black. Well, dark-skinned people. <laughs> you think all the dark-skinned people are the same? Mm. I just get that. He's on us. Matthew chapter 5 is where we're going. We went to Leviticus 20 and Leviticus 18 showing that homosexuality is an abomination to the most high. All right, look up the definition of abomination. It's disgusting, something that's abhorred, detestable. And now we're in Matthew, showing you that Christ himself didn't tell you it was okay to uh, play for the Grogris Society. That's it. Yeah, Matthew 5, verse 17. And again, y'all, this is an anti-sin thing, not an anti-gay thing. It's just they are putting this in our face now. Well, this is okay. Right? If Obama was a murderer, or an adulterer, or an idolater, we'd be hearing him out as well. These things are an abomination to the most high. Got that? Matthew 5? Matthew. Oh, that, okay. Matthew 5 and 17. What does it say, Israel? Think not that I have come to destroy the law um, or the prophets. You know what Christ said? Christ said, don't even think it. That I came, I was sent to get rid of the law. <laughs> or the prophets. That's the whole Old Testament. Come on, brother. I am not come to destroy, uh -huh. but to fulfill. Right. So his whole uh, mission was to fulfill the scriptures. Everything, everything he was doing from his birth, his resurrection, his earthly ministry, all of it was prophesied in the Bible. What's the definition of fulfill? Fulfill? Because <laughs> 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 Go ahead, fulfill. Let's grab, grab the definition of fulfill. Let's put you on. Put that on. You got dictionary.com on there? Put it out for us real quick. Fulfill. He's going to fulfill or complete what it is. Not to do away with But to prove to you that he is the Messiah. So how, how else you think on him, bro? How else you think that he was that it was proven he was the Christ? They had to go off the scrolls that was already there, the Old Testament. So them brothers were going into the Old Testament proving that Jesus is the Christ. That's what they was doing. Go ahead, brother. Fulfill. Uh -huh. To carry out mm. or bring to realization mm. as a prophecy or promise. Mm. Uh -huh. To perform or do as a duty. And to perform or do as a duty. Obey or follow <laughs> as commands. As what? Commands. Commands. Mm. To satisfy requirements, obligations. Mm. To bring to an end, mm. finish or complete as a period of time. Mm. To develop the full potential of usually what is it? Of usually used reflexively, she realized that she could never fulfill herself in such work. That's the way the sentence that they're trying to use it for. That's the, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the, the sentence they're trying to get yeah, to develop the full potential of. But to fulfill, to complete, uh, to finish out, 
I wanted to show you that, look, everything was prophesied about me. I'm here now is what it was. I'm going to lay my life down. All that was prophesied. All of it. For them gambling over his garments, for them not breaking his bones, to him not standing in the grave seeing corruption, all that's in the Bible. All that's in the Old Testament, before written down before Christ ever came and fulfilled it. So he's here to fulfill, right? But there's also scriptures in the Old Testament that hasn't been, that hasn't been fulfilled yet, like his return. See that? So that has to be fulfilled as well. All right, bro, come on. But you know what, real quick? You know what? There are some scriptures that they'll call to try to use to say that you don't have to follow the laws anymore. Yeah, Is that like in Romans or something like that? Romans, Galatians, yeah. Ephesians. And if you, don't, if you don't understand what he's saying, you would think he's saying don't do it. Right. He never says don't do it. Never say it. All he's saying is you're not up under that. You have right? to repent to him for forgiveness and not the suffering. Yeah, like, like check this out. You got, you got, you got what he's saying. We under faith. You got the law, the laws, and then Christ up the board. The faith. See that he just up, he raised it on us. So, so that means so, you have so, to follow the laws in faith. In, in faith. faith. So right. you can't, you can't manipulate this and be faithless no more. Like. Right. Like somebody could just be doing it like a child could be doing it just because you forced them to do it. Right. He really don't believe. He ain't got no faith for real. His mama told me I got to do this. Right. Mm -hmm. So what's the law in faith? Most of us don't stay with our parents anymore, us that's grown or whatever. I'm not up under my mother's household no more. But I ain't get up under there and start to forget how to brush my teeth and, you know, wipe my behind and take care of myself. Just because you're not up under this, does that mean you don't do it? See what I'm saying? They're taking the script as if, okay, you ain't got to do this, and then they pass you a pagan worship to go along with it. He ain't never ordained none of that. You feel me? And the law he's talking about is the law of sacrifice and the temple service. He ain't said nothing about come up with your own Sabbath day, put up a graven image. It's okay to worship how you want to worship. He ain't said none of that. So they, they one line in Paul, close the book and say, oh, silly. Well, I keep no commandments. It don't matter no more. <clears throat> and that's why homosexual pastors out here now. Saying it's okay. We ain't, got to, we ain't got to keep the law. The Bible don't say that. It say you're not under the law, you're under faith. But do we make the law void because we got grace and faith? No, God forbid. My fact is grab that word from Romans 6. Let me finish that. We come back to Sister got a question. That needs to be answered. Romans 6, 1 through 4, he wrote. And then somebody grab Romans 3. 31. Let me show you how they don't even finish reading this man. They'll read one, one verse on Paul and then call him Pauline. The Pauline kisses. Uh, and then close the book and have you think, well, I ain't got to do nothing. All I got to do is just believe. Right? But you got to finish this man out because he's giving you two sides of the coin and then he's giving you, you know what I'm saying, the end of it. Like, well, what should we say then? Shall we sin because we not up under law, but under faith. God forbid. Sin is what? Breaking of God's law. Well, he let you know you ain't just because you're under grace, you ain't got no free badge to do whatever you want. He ain't saying that. Heads are not rolling right now. That's the problem. We just not administering the judgment written in the Bible. We under grace now. That's why we're not killing on sexual, adulterers, idolaters, none of that. The punishment is death on all of that. Why are we doing it? Because we under grace. But what that mean? You, is, are we okay at that? No. It's cool? No. No, no. That ain't what the script talking about. You said Romans 3. No, man. Romans 6. Oh, right. 1 to 4 and then rock rap right, Romans 3 and 31 for it. Now we get back on our, you know. And that's a, that's a good question, though, sister. A lot of people say, well, you know, it says you ain't got it. They don't never say but don't. Even when I just looked up on the internet, you know, there's a lot of like websites, Christian organizations, and it'll say, like, you don't have to follow the laws of the Old Testament, and they go to Romans uh -huh. to show, like, right. why, and then right. they'll one-line it, right. and then close the book, but never, never break down the understanding of the transition of what we in now, you know what I'm saying, what we in now, you know what I'm saying, it passed, all it did was pass from what you call this order of iron right here, the Levitical priesthood to he up the bar of faith. Like say uh, under that Levitical priesthood, we could you could put people to death for the homosexuality, like mm -hmm. brick shop. Now we can't do that. Right. You know, right. Right. Yeah, but it's but <laughs> hey, hey, but it's, the judgment is coming though. That's the thing. That's what judgment day is about. See that? So we just up the bar and it just the priesthood is switched over. So where now you got to operate in grace, mercy, faith. 
All that. Look out for the homeless. Everything's supposed to be known, man. But that don't mean don't do the commandments of God. That's where they be going off at. You got that, bro? Yeah. Let's get it. Right Romans. there, Romans 6, verse 1. And what, what Paul also was saying is your law keeping is void if you don't have the faith in Christ. You can't see these people that believe in the Old Testament but don't believe in Christ. You feel me? Oh, God, I keep all the laws. Yeah, okay, but you don't believe in the Christ. You see that? He was prophesied and written down for you to believe on. That's a commandment. So you don't even keep all the commandments. That's a lie. You see that? So we can't be playing around with this thing, man. Come on, bro. Romans. Chapter 6, verse 1. Uh -huh. What shall we say then? This is a question. What shall we say? Come on. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Shall we continue to break God's law because we under grace? God forbid. God what? Forbid. What does that mean? Don't. <laughs> that means no. That's because you under grace. He didn't give you a free bash to go be wicked. Right? He just gave you time before grace run out. Man, grow in these commandments. Love them. You feel me? Learn how to walk in the spiritual <laughs> being of the most high God. Come on, brother. Yes. Come on. How shall we, that we are dead to sin, live any longer therein? Uh -huh. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Mm. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, mm. that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Walk in what? Newness of life. Newness of life. So you let go of all those pagan elements, this pagan worship, these, these worldly worships and all that. You walk in newness of life if you believe in Christ. Yeah, we are under grace, but that, do that give you a free badge to do whatever you want? And then say, oh, Jesus loves it. He cleaned it. He sanctified it. And you got that picture right there in your mind right there. Him. <laughs> God, you say, God forbid. Christ ain't come to make us lawless. Or make us faithless. He raised the bar on us now. Why? I could have never, we go over there all the time in class, I could have never, ever touched my brother's woman, ever in my life. But in my mind, I'm lusting after. I'm just as guilty. See that? Like, you can manipulate this without the faith. Like, Cain, brother, I never touched your woman, dog. What you mean I'm guilty of adultery? Right? But under this order, we under not Christ's order, if you in your mind lusting after her. Uh, you're just as guilty. But when you read these Matthew chapter 5, like we just read from chapter 7, Christ go over the laws again, and he said, look, you have heard, thou shalt not kill. But I say unto you, this is how it go. You have heard, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, this, yeah, is, this is the true meaning of what this means. So Christ came and broke down the true meaning of what the law means and everything. Right? The true understanding, and the true understanding got to do with our conscience. And uh, the intents of our heart. That's what this order of the kills today is about. The intentions of your heart. My intentions was to be getting with his woman every time he looked away. We got Google guy with each other. I was winking at him. You feel me? Man, I'm guilty of adultery. I'm burning in my loins for this man's woman, but I never physically touched her. You can manipulate that just, oh, bro, I never touched her physically. Under the law, I never touched her. Right? But Christ said you're guilty of, you just as guilty of in your mind you did. So he upped the bar on us. He ain't come and dropped nothing. He raised it. You feel me? That way you couldn't be running around and talking about you, okay, you got you a garment on or a three-piece suit. Outwardly, you righteous. Right? But Emily, what he called out? Dead yeah. men's bones. A grain yard. Right? So what good is the outward cup if you ain't even clean the inside? It's no good at all. It don't mean that. Jump down to verse 14 on that, man. So we can get back to our top. What we do? Romans 6, read 14 through 16. Verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. See what? What shall not have dominion? Sin. Law breaking. Come on. For you are not under the law, uh -huh. but under grace. You're not under the law, under grace. What faith. then? Okay. Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Shall we break God's law because we are under grace? God be. God what? For be. God, that mean no. <laughs> they never read this man in his entirety. They just read one line and close the book on the grace. Now you thinking you don't got to do it. It's not what the Bible is saying, man. Come on, brother. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves, yield yourselves service to obey, uh -huh. his servants ye are 
to whom he to whom he obeyed, uh -huh. whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Whether you yield your members or your body to obey. His servants you are. So whoever orders you take, and that's who you follow. Lord, say, keep the Sabbath day. Everybody go to church wing. Sunday. Sunday. Who you follow? Sunday. Lord, say, no graven images. You got it right up there with Martin, JFK, and Jesus. Right there. Keep <laughs> um, saying, no bomb. No, no, Dream no, 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 no. <laughs> See that? He say, no graven It's all good. The Lord, say, don't do this. We justify what he say don't do and act as if it's all good. It's not all good. He'll be entering into judgment shortly. Right? But he, he prophesied that he would give us grace and we would get more wicked. Read that to him. Verse 17. But God think that you were the servants of sin, but he have obeyed from the heart that from of doctrine, which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Mm. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. So as, because of the weakness of your flesh. His flesh is weak. Come on, brother. For as, you, for as ye have yielded your member servants to uncleanness mm -hmm. and to iniquity unto iniquity, uh -huh. even so now yield your member servants to righteousness unto holiness. See, so he's telling you, be servant of righteousness. Don't yield your members to work wickedness. What is wickedness? Sin. It's, it's, it's sin. It ain't just oh, what you say. Oh, he's drinking a bud ice on her. Or he's, oh, he's wicked. The Bible just say don't be drunk. I mean, he's drinking some wine or some beer, but look, society say, oh, he's drinking that Jesus juice over there. He's a sinner. Now, the scripture tell you what's with you, what's an abomination, what the Lord like, what he don't like. We're not to add or take from it. Or take from that. What verse you say you want to read? 21. Yeah, 20, right? Oh, read on here. Read on here. But when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. Mm. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now, now ashamed? What fruit did you have when you were doing all these worldly things? No fruit. You ain't getting fruit meaning you didn't have no, you wouldn't bring nobody to Christ doing all this. Regardless if you was Christmas tree ducking, believing that bunnies laid eggs, any of that. That has nothing to do with this Bible right here. Nothing. Come on, people. For the end of those things is death. Is, is what? Death. Death. A lot of people don't know. The Easter bunny with the eggs got to do with a false goddess. And when they used to sacrifice children because they wanted their crops to grow right. That's what the pagans believed. If they, if they didn't have a successful harvest, they would pick a child to be sacrificed, offer his blood up, uh, and pray to the gods and goddesses that they would accept their sacrifice. And what was they dipping in the blood, though? Like the eggs. The, blood of the, the eggs. That's where the dying of the eggs That's where the dying of the eggs come from. But it's a good movie, y'all can see. Man, I just seen it for the first time the other day. It blew my mind. It's called The Wicker Tree. Wicker Tree. And then they got another one Nicholas Cage played in in 06 called Wicker Man. Oh, I saw that. You remember what they kept telling them about the gods and goddesses and your sacrifice? Mm. Right? They still do these things. Man, people think we lying when we tell them that. Wait till y'all see this in a movie. Y'all go watch both of the Wicker Tree and the Wicker Man. They go right to how pagans, they worship Easter and all this, man. Straight up. Worshippers of the Queen of Heaven. That's what they call it. Uh, they used to kill children and sacrifice them to have a successful harvest because it was a drought in the land. Verse 22. Come on. But now being made free from sin and become service to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Mm. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Now back to Romans 3. Romans 3. I think it's verse 31. The, the scriptures never tell you don't do the law. I just say you're not a wonder if you're one of faith. So he just raised the ball. You walk the law in faith. Right? In other words, you can have a child, you can make him come to Bible study, but he never believed. He just do this because you told him to. Right? But you become a spiritual man of the Lord with power when you start operating in faith. Right? Christ and all them diseases was being healed and all that. Christ like, you believe I can do this? They're like, yeah, Lord, your faith has made you whole. Have it as you will. Get up. <laughs> See that? That's right. faith is very important. But faith means you're fully persuaded. You're not wavering. You ain't praying to the Lord and say, well, okay, Lord, do this for me. But really in your mind, you don't believe. Mm -hmm. You don't believe he can get it done. This, right. this is too hard for the Lord. I have cancer. He can't really cure me. Huh? Or can he? That's right. For some of them sickness, you say you ain't going to be able to go get healed. What you talking about, chapter? What you talking about, Nick Shank? 
And I'm saying some of the sickness in the script, when you read when he said in Deuteronomy 28, mm -hmm. you go and try to go get healed, you won't be healed. Oh, because of us going against him. Right. That's what you're saying? Right. right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because we're not seeking him. That's right. why. It ain't nothing that the Lord can't take away. It's, there's nothing <coughs> possible for the most high. Exactly. Right. I was going to say, what if you have someone like with cancer and they believe in the Lord and heal them, but they don't believe that they're worthy to be healed? How does that play into well, I, I, would, I would personally, I would sit down with him and uh, vent to him, go over the scripture with him. Why do you feel you're not worthy? So is that lacking faith in God or kind of lacking faith in yourself? No, because he believes in God. But he feels he's not worthy for some type of disgusting act maybe he did or something. Like, you know, nobody, no man but the spirit of man is in man. So wait, get him to vent. What do you mean? Why do you feel like that? Sometimes that's healing for us. Get certain things off our chest. You feel me? Let him get it about him. Then talk to him, read the scriptures to him or something. You feel me? We find comfort in the Bible. Right? So I don't I don't see him having like this. He said he believes. Right? So you gotta take that as face value. He said he believed, but he said he feels he's not worthy. Right? So that's a self problem. That's a self check. Where we at? Romans what? Three. Three. Read that verse 31. That's it right there. Romans. Chapter 3, verse 31. Romans chapter 3, verse 27. Now 20, 26. How we look? Is everybody there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Romans chapter 3, verse 26. Mm -hmm. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Where is boasting then? Where is boasting? Or what is bragging then? Come on. It is excluded. It is excluded. Why are we boasting and bragging when we all been wishes? Come on. By what law? Mm. Of works? Mm. Nay. But by the law of faith. So faith is a law. Trip off that. People tell me you ain't one of the law, you want faith is it's a law. law. You can't even please the Lord without it. You have to have faith. When you read mm. Hebrews 11, all the great men of the Lord had faith and believed. Mom. Can you just go back to 20? Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, I was doing the same thing too. Yeah. Well, 19, I'm 19. sorry. 19. Yeah. Romans, chapter 3, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, mm -hmm. that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. That every, what it say? That every mouth may be stopped. How many is that? Every mouth or some mouth? <laughs> Every <laughs> mouth. And we all make it. Come on. And become guilty before and God. All the world may become guilty before the most high. Because we all in transgressed or broke that law some way, shape, form, or fashion. Come on, brother. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. So you can't just come and bring this and say, Lord, I'm a righteous man. This is all I do. Right? You can't just say it's just this. Right? Come on. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Mm. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, mm. being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all, and upon all that them that believe. Mm. For there is no difference. There is no difference. We all operate on the same spiritual level like that. There is no difference. Come on, brother. For all have sinned mm -hmm. and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The redemption. Christ shed his blood. We are redeemed. Right? Come on, brother. Whom God had set forth to be a propitiation. Propitiation on atonement. Come on. Through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. That are what? Remission of sins that are past. That are past. Come on, bro. Through the forbearance of God. Mm. To declare, I say it this, time his righteousness. That he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Where is boasted then? It is excluded. Mm -hmm. By what? Law? Mm -hmm. Of works? Nay. But by law of faith. But by the law of faith. Faith is a law. When somebody tell you you gotta keep the commandments, laws done away with, you throwing faith out the window as well. Can we, can we, because I kind of got confused, I'm sorry. We let, look, look, this is what we need to do with Paul. We need to read him out. It's going to answer your question. Okay. I know where you're going. It's going to answer your question. Come on. <laughs> Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Mm -hmm. Is he the God of the Jews only? Mm -hmm. Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. No doubt. Come on. 
Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith mm -hmm. and uncircumcision through faith. Mm -hmm. Do we then make void the law through faith? That's the question. Do we then make void the law through faith? Question mark. That means the law don't matter no more. Since we got faith, put it aside. Do we make that void? Come on, bro. God forbid. What does that mean? Don't. No. Come on. Yeah. We established the law. We established the law. That's our foundation. So again, he never told you. If you one line it, it'll sound like this. Right, and that's what they do. They don't yeah. continue to read Yeah, read them out. Because he's going to clear up. He know what he's saying is going to cause questions. What shall we say then? Right? What he said just had everybody like, hold on, well, without the law, don't do it. Is he saying don't do it? We can worship how we want to, do whatever. He ain't said none of that. He said we establish it. Read that last verse again, brother. Do we then make void the law through faith? What does void mean? That means it don't count. Null and void. Do we make the law void because we got faith? Come on. God forbid. That means no. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. We establish the law. We establish. Because the knowledge of sin, you have to know the laws to know the sin. Know what you break. Right. The sin is the Right. He said the knowledge of the law is the knowledge of sin. Yeah. Right. Because you. You, you, how do you know you're an idolater if you don't know what the law say concerning idolatry? I mean, right. how do you know evil if you don't know good? Good point. What was we at before? But did that, did that kind of clear a little, yeah. little something up? Whenever y'all read Paul, read him all the way through. Don't let him one line because it'll throw your understanding off. If you read him all the way through, he going to clear up because he know what he's saying. It's, it's going over your head. Remember, he was a scholar in the law. Pharisee. Uh, straight scholar. So you got to read him straight through. He's just letting you know you can't you can manipulate this, but you can't manipulate that. Faith in the law. 